Hello, my name is Mike Pastella. I'm Assistant Director of Campus Life for Student Involvement. And today I'd like to share about advising student organizations, in particular, some roles and responsibilities of advisors, and then some information about the ACPA Code of Ethics in regards to working with their students. To assist me in doing that, I'm going to utilize a PowerPoint that I've used for numerous programs in the past with advisors on campus. So I invite you to enjoy the slides as we move forward together today. All right, so the first thing I'd like to talk about are some roles for advisors. Now, please know on this slide and the next slide that these roles for advisors are suggested potential roles. These are not things that we think every advisor should be doing. It depends on the organization. They're great talking points to discuss with the officers of the organization you advised to see where you can assist them, where they need assistance, and where you can grow your relationship together. So teaching and coaching, if you're advising an organization that's similar to um, something you instruct for courses, academics, things like that, you might be able to offer a lot that way. If you're advising a sport club and you have experience with that sport, you might be able to assist in that capacity too. Consultation, this could be very general in assisting them at first with running a meeting, planning a program, general thoughts about an idea where things come in. It could be more specific, again, depending on your discipline and the nature of the organization too. Provide continuity, that's a big one. One of the universal things that advisors can do, particularly over time, is provide continuity to the organization because you may be the longest tenured or running member, so to speak, of the organization and being the advisor. Some advisors have been in that capacity for decades and they have a historical memory of what's taking place and can help from, hey, 10 years ago we tried this, or we heard this similar organization on this campus did this, or this is where you need to go to re-register in the point, go find Mike or something like that. So providing continuity from officer base to officer base from year to year is a huge role for the advisor. Counseling, this can come in a lot of capacities and is something that I certainly think you should do at your own comfort level. Some may look to you for advice and counsel on registering for class, some for planning a program, some for working with maybe difficult members or officers that aren't getting along through something. Some may want to share about a personal loss, maybe a grandparent that's passed, maybe a pet. Some may want to share about other things. Again, this is at your comfort level and feel free when appropriate to refer them to Mary Walker Health Center or the Counseling Center for additional help and services beyond your ability that way. Interpretation of policy, this is another big one. So if a group comes to you or some of the officers and share, we're not sure about this policy, we're not sure where this is, or do you think the reservation allows this? This is something where you can help them interpret that and you can encourage them to reach out to the appropriate people. Maybe it's campus life for a reservation, maybe it's campus recreation for something with the hidden fields, maybe it's student association for finance and help in that way. Maybe it's something with the student handbook and you're like, let's see, make sure that's not a violation of policy that way. All resources online or with contacts in those offices that you can assist them with. Doesn't mean you have to have the answer, but be able to help connect them to the right people who can. Facilitation and management. That can mean a lot of things too. One way an advisor can assist is with elections, which can be popular this time of year to help with counting, which is a little more challenging in our remote times. But when you're at a meeting, maybe it's helping to negotiate a tough conversation or maybe they sort of pass the gavel, so to speak, and let you manage part of the conversation so that all the officers can speak and share and work through things that way. Meeting emergencies. Again, this is a comfort level thing. And the word emergency can mean many things to many organizations. Running out of ice cream during an ice cream social could be an emergency to some people. Um, something that's truly an emergency that requires medical assistance obviously is an emergency as well. So in that respect, if something were to happen, 
scene of that organization, if they're a sport club, making sure that they have contact in place, if they're traveling, if things are happening that way, if they're a fraternity or sorority, making sure that they have an emergency plan in place and are working with Kashanda, the assistant director of Campus Life for Greek Life for that. Knowing that if there's something they have to report to SA or SAVAC on campus that way, and just working with general things for university police, the dean of students office, should they need to refer, and again, using a lot of those resources on the web page. Financial guidance, and that's a key word, it's guidance, because for most of you, you'll be advising organizations that are SA funded. And SA has relatively straightforward rules and policies in regards to SA finance. And that's something that the president and treasurer should be well versed in, and something that you can ask them questions to ask the director of finance or SA to help in regards to finance that way. In regards to fraternities and sororities, you should be looking for guidance from your alumni board or from your national offices. You shouldn't be ever hands on in regards to money and finance, but just giving some general thoughts of, hey, you planned a great program, but you only have $250. And it sounds like that's going to cost a lot more than that. That would be an appropriate type of financial guidance. Social activities making sure that they stay appropriate within the confines of the student handbook for activities and certainly something you can attend. Going back to that ice cream social idea, on-campus barbecues, things that take place that way who are appropriate to engage with our students and their organizations in a social activity. Organization meetings, this is something you really need to work with the organization to see what their expectation is and what your expectation is. If they expect you at every meeting and you can do that, fantastic not realistic in most cases if it's more once a month if it's three times a year thinking about what that is and do you engage with the officers more during your office hours or other set times or through updates and email or are you at the meetings more often something definitely to be discussed with the officers scholastic eligibility academics this is something that if you're advising a fraternity or sorority, their um, organization GPA is something that's calculated and you'll work with Kishanda on that to see how they're doing and meeting the standards of excellence. If you're advising an honor organization or an honorary that way, your department might be assisting the students in knowing if someone's qualified academically. For most SA organizations and most advisors viewing this, it would more just be reminding the students and working with them that they're students first letting them know about OLS, letting them know about tutoring, challenging them to keep their academics up, not just their involvement in organizations. However, you wouldn't really be checking grades. Organizational records ties back to continuity. They might want to share a flash drive with you. They might ask if they can keep some binders in your office over the summer or give you access to some of the passwords for things with agendas and records that way. Again, a comfort level. What are you willing to share and work with the group that way in discussing that in advance? Advisor responsibilities are broke up in three primary principal areas. Responsibility to the group, therefore the registered student organization. Responsibility to those individuals, so it could be the officers or members of the organization, and responsibility to the university, so in this case, SUNY Oswego. In regards to responsibility to the group, helping them with their group dynamics, help them set goals, play the role of devil's advocate. I know one of the areas that I have been utilized heavily by student organizations is being that devil's advocate, sometimes because they request it of me, Sometimes because I just do it and share, well, what about this? What about that? Even if I think they have a great idea, just to get them to think broader about how things could play out that way. Being available to the group and letting them know what that means. So is it in your office hours? Is it an email? Is it, I'll go to meetings when you invite me, make sure to invite me once or twice a semester. Serve as a liaison, maybe sharing with them, hey, our department's doing this. You're an academic group within the department. It would be great if you'd be there. Or, hey, I've kept in touch with this alumni who is part of our group, and they can offer this now. Let's make a connection, and maybe they can do a Zoom into a meeting, or maybe they're visiting campus, and you can develop that relationship, too. Responsibility to the individuals. 
This is assisting the officers, not um, overstepping and doing their roles, but helping them in regards to someone might want to talk about running a meeting for the first time. Someone might want to talk about talking to that person who is on the verge of having too many absences. Um, helping them again on a personal level, they might be saying, I don't know where to go for this as far as helping this one course. Or maybe I need to talk to someone about this personal situation I have and getting them to the counseling center, letting them know about university police services at the dean's office if they need to academically withdraw, other things that are there that way. Showing that everyone's important to the group, helping to work with them to be inclusive of the, all members, not just the officers, and working with those members to challenge them to become officers in the future. Not saying, hey, necessarily you should run for position A, B, or C, but saying, you know, I could see you as an officer one day. You should talk to these three or four officers, see what it's like, and consider advancing in the group that way. And then your responsibility to SUNY Oswego. Some of this can also be found in the student handbook, which is online. If you go into the campus policies and it shows some things about your role as the advisor there too. But to make sure that you're guiding students to stay within student handbook policies, within essay policies, and when you have questions on this to work with student development, we're here to help you with that in regards to any questions you have as an advisor. You can email me, call me when we're back on campus. We can even do Zooms if need be. ACPA has provided some things with their code of ethics, which I think really fit into the advising overall model. One is respecting autonomy. Let students express themselves. Again, within the confines of the student handbook and making sure things are appropriate that way. But sometimes there are tough discussions that have to take place in organizations. Sometimes some of those skills interpersonally are developed in this setting. And maybe it's okay if it's heated to a degree, but it should never become inappropriately heated in regards to being racist, sexist, something that's a violation of rights that way. But sometimes tough discussions, tough planning helps them build as an organization that way. Do no harm. Um, this is something where, you know what, it's okay to let them fail. And sometimes being super advisor and swooping in and saving them is the worst lesson you can do and might harm them. But also, if you see a liability, if you think we, someone could be hurt from this, there could be physical or emotional damage that takes place, that's something where you want to step in. You want to get at saying involved and let us know in student involvement, if need be, the Dean of Students Office, student conduct. You don't want to let something that's going to create great financial harm, physical or emotional harm, but sometimes the best lessons a group can have is failing. Letting them learn from that and grow from that now in a student organization will certainly prepare them for when they have challenging times in their careers. Help others. Help the process, but don't take it over. It's one thing to guide. It's one thing to be a devil's advocate. It's one thing to count votes. It's one thing to moderate the discussion. You shouldn't be saying, no, you need to do this, unless it's something, again, that's going to create a liability. It's really for them to seek and grow. It's for you to guide and advise the process, not to run the process. Be just, treat everyone fairly. With all interpersonal and social relationships with groups, there might be some leaders that you become closer to, you keep in touch with them, their alumni, and there might be some leaders that you're not as close to, but it's your job as the advisor to work with everybody and to be supportive and guiding and accessible to all officers, even if the officers you maybe didn't want to in the election did. It's very key to be just and supportive and fair to all of them. Be trustworthy. If you tell them you're gonna to go to an event, Go to the event or let them know why you couldn't go to the event. Um, work with them on things. If you're going to say, I'm going to let you vent to me as long as it's not something I would need to report to Title IX or conduct or something like that, let them do that, but then keep that within those parameters, especially if another officer might be venting to you as well. You know, develop that sense where they know they can come to you in a safe space. Some general references um, from information that I've put together, opportunity to build some of this during my days in the University of Wisconsin system for their system in that respect. And a general thank you. I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. I'm sorry that we weren't able to enjoy this video together. Well, actually not a video, but this presentation together 
where we could ask questions of each other, have a wonderful and informative discussion, and then what the building that takes place as we get to talk and discuss things um, with other advisors in the room. However, if you visit Laker Life Student Involvement at the Point, I will be able to assist you in regards to, you can find my email there, and I'm happy to be a guide for you. You'll find our advisor guide there that you can download. You'll find information about officer transitions and elections that may help your organization at this point in time, and a end of the year checklist that we've put together.